Hey y'all, it's Fortune Frankly and welcome to Fortune Frankly Fridays where we do DIY home decor. Today we're doing cottagecore DIYs. If you didn't already know, which why wouldn't you? Cottagecore is an internet aesthetic that's centered on the idealized version of western rural life. I'm not about to get into a whole video essay because it's not that type of channel, but just think strawberry dress meets Taylor Swift's folklore meets picnics. The aesthetic has existed since the 2010s on the deep, dark Tumblr, but it recently gained more mainstream attention during quarantine 2020. There is a lot to be said about cottagecore, but I will link more information in the description. Now we're doing two DIYs in this video, so let's get started. For our first DIY, we're making a bento bag. Now you can put anything in here from produce to like bread, you know, the bread that you made. For this project, you'll need cotton fabric, embroidery thread, and some sewing essentials. Starting with my fabric, I'm gonna measure it out. You can make this any size you want, but your ratio should be one to three. My rectangle ended up being 12 inches wide and 36 inches long. Plus, I left half an inch for seam allowance, and I double checked so that my math was correct. Using my embroidery thread, I sewed up the sides and I did that with a running, running, running stitch. And this is when I realized my hands were ashy, so I put on some lotion. Don't come at me. Now I learned how to do this pattern from Fairyland Cottage here on YouTube and I'll leave the video linked below. Starting with the right side facing up, we're going to bring the bottom left corner up to the top. the top right corner down to the bottom. And then we're gonna fold over that first triangle we made to make kind of another triangle. I don't know if it's an isosceles triangle or whatever, but it's one of those geometric shapes. And where our two edges meet, I'm gonna sew them together on both sides. All you need to complete the cottage core aesthetic is some homemade bread. And since this ain't a cooking channel, I'ma leave the recipe linked in the description. For project Nudelos, we're making a journal and we'll be making our own paper to go inside of it. For this project, you'll need scrap paper, a blender, strainer, a pan that's larger than your strainer, a sheet, coloring agents to give your paper some flavor. No, not the new Jake from State Farm. I mean some spices, you know, some sazon. Anything else you want to add to your paper like thread, two cereal boxes, fabric, an embroidery hoop, embroidery thread, hole puncher, and some twine. Starting off with my paper, I'm gonna just cut it up into smaller pieces and let them soak in some water for about two hours. I'm gonna set that aside and work on the cover of our notebook. And I'm just gonna draw out the word journal and embroider that using a backstitch. Now for a basic rundown of the backstitch, you're gonna start off like you would any running stitch. 
And then when you come back up from your fabric, you're gonna leave a gap. You're gonna loop back into one of the holes that you made previously and then come up with another gap. This will allow you to make one continuous line of thread. I realized I didn't have enough of this one color, so I'm gonna be using a kind of ombre color scheme. Now I'm gonna leave it pretty minimal because we have a lot of other things going on. Now taking our strainer, we're gonna just trace an outline of the shape because this is gonna be the shape of our notebook. Now, if you're a square, you can totally go for a more traditional shape and you wanna do that on three other pieces of fabric. And I'm gonna trace and cut out four circles on our cereal boxes as well. Now the cereal boxes were looking a little too colorful, a little too 21st century, rather than the cottage vibes we're going for. So we're gonna glue the colorful faces together just so it doesn't show through our fabric. And we're gonna punch some holes because this will come in really handy later when putting together our notebook. I'm gonna glue the fabric to the cardboard and I just found putting a little bit of glue on the outline and then smoothing it over with your flat palm really helps it lay pretty flat. All right, clean up them edges. Now for the coloring agent, I wanted to go a natural route and use some avocado dye. And I love me some avocado toast in the mornings. Yeah, I'm basic, whatever. All you need to do is put the pits in some water, make sure you take off the skin before it really starts to boil, and let it boil like you've been letting your pasta boil for the past year in quarantine. Now to making our paper. So I'm gonna show you what I did initially, then I'm gonna show you what you should do. I watched a wonderful tutorial here on YouTube by Vijayata Sharma. I made some modifications to it, but I'll leave it linked down below. So here I was really noticing this gray newspaper was not looking cute at all. I even added some color to it to try, but it looked like, like puke, literally. So I'm going to take some white paper and use that instead. The pulp should look somewhat like your least favorite on smashed potatoes. And in our pan, we're just going to put some water and add the pulp to it. And you want to add any little details. I'm adding some flower petals and some thread. Now, here's what not to do. Don't add too little pulp to your water. Your paper won't be thick, and that's what we're going for here. You want some body yaddy 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 to it. Don't lay a towel over it and pat it dry. Don't try to flip it over and lay it flat on your sheet. Now here's what you should do. So from the beginning, I'm gonna add a good amount of pulp to my pan and add more water. I'm just gonna use some curry spice here to make this a kind of yellow color. And we wanna make sure to get the strainer underneath a lot of that pulp, just so that when we lift it up, we have a nice layer of pulp that will become our paper. Now in the oven, I put a metal pan filled with water at the bottom. This will keep our paper from burning. I learned the hard way. And then we're just gonna put our strainer without the plastic handle covering into the oven, leave it in there for about 15 minutes or so, now what you should have is something that looks like a tortilla, really crispy and cute, and it should just peel right off of that strainer. Bada bing, bada boom. Anytime you start with a new color, you want to completely change your water out so that the color isn't mixed with anything else. Now going back to our cover, it's finally time to put the notebook together. I'm gonna punch a hole through the fabric here. You can see the holes that you already made in the cardboard if you hold it up to the light. And then I'm gonna use that as a template to punch holes through a piece of paper, and then use that paper as a template to punch holes through the other pieces of paper. And I'm just gonna be using the white and off-white sheets. But for comparison, here is that ugly gray newspaper, the curry paper, and the avocado paper. Now just using a large needle, I'm going to thread that twine through the holes. So I made about 20 sheets of paper, but I only ended up using about half. And here you have your journal.
All right, welcome back. So that journal took me a long time to make, but I think it came out really well. And I'm curious to know which one was your favorite project. You can let me know in the comments below. Tell me how funny I am. Tell me something that you like about cottagecore. I won't go into the whole spiel because I know y'all know it by now. So I will link my Black Lives Matter syllabus in the description bar below. And as always, thanks for watching.